Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know. <laughs> Y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. So this is a bit of an older situation that I wanna talk to you guys about. Have y'all heard about the situation about the teenagers that were up on this 60 foot bridge? This actually happened back in 2018 and there's some pretty good footage and stuff that I'm gonna add to this video. But when I saw this, it just really reminded me honestly of my teenage years and i wanted to ask y'all if y'all can relate in any way too and then also get y'all's opinions on what ended up happening at the end of this and see if you guys think that the judge did the right thing in this situation so in august of 2018 a group of teens decided to visit the 60 foot molten falls bridge on the lewis river in washington state so when people come to this park and they make their way to this bridge it is a known spot where people will jump off of mostly teenagers and young folks and it's a very high up bridge but the park has a sign up saying no jumping no diving and they have these signs signs up about no jumping because it can cause serious injury if you jump off of this bridge, of course, down into the water. For instance, back in July of 2017, a 47-year-old man was critically injured after jumping off of that same exact bridge. According to the Clark County Fire Chief, it's actually illegal to jump from that bridge because so many people have gotten hurt in the past. And because of all of these injuries, that's why the park had to put the sign up, no jumping and no diving. And if any of y'all are watching this and you're not from places where there's like a lot of lakes and waters and bridges like this, you're probably looking at this and going, who in the world would walk across this 60 foot bridge and look down and go, hmm, I think I should jump off of this. But then again, some of us are from surrounding areas with water and that's kind of a normal thing. But even though the signs were up, people were still going out to the bridge and testing their luck. But on this day in August of 2018, 16 year old Jordan Holgerson was up on the bridge. She was watching her friends get over onto the ledge of the bridge on the outside of the railing, stand there and jump off. And she was trying to hype herself in to jumping off of the bridge as well. She had even climbed over the railing and was standing on that little ledge there looking down nervously. I mean, you're looking down 60 feet. That's a long ways down. But she was trying to muster up enough strength to jump off of the bridge with her friends. You know that old saying, if your friends jump off a bridge, are you going to too? Well, I guess Jordan in her mind was, was thinking about it. One of Jordan's close friends, 18 year old Taylor Smith was with Jordan and was anxiously waiting for her to jump. This is when video footage captured Jordan nervously standing on this ledge where she can be heard nervously saying, no, I don't wanna do it. This is when her friend Taylor shoves her from the back and she goes off the side of the bridge. Watch this. Three, no, I won't go in two. Well, she's saying no. No, I just... Ready? Oh, oh, that's so now later Jordan would say that her friend Taylor had actually started a countdown and Jordan was saying like no don't count down if you count down I'm not gonna do it this is deja vu if any of y'all ever been there your friends are like 10 9 8 and you're panicking you're like no stop that stop that stop that and you're like rethinking it that's the moment that she was in and so when they were counting down this is when she said I won't do it if you count down I'm not ready and you can actually hear a male's voice in the background saying she don't want to listen again Three. no I won't go in two well she's saying no no I just ready oh, oh. 
Jordan would later say that when she was falling, she was panicking and she was trying to push her like feet forward so she could land feet first, but she was not able to. She also said that she believed that in the middle of falling, she fainted, but she woke up when she hit the water chest first. 60 feet up, you know a belly flop into a pool? Have any of y'all ever done that? It's painful. She did a 60 foot chest, chest flop, belly flop into that water, boom, and hit it. Now doctors would come out later and say that that fall literally could have killed her. In the air, I was trying to push myself um, forward so I could be like straight up and down so that my feet hit first, but that didn't really work. Oh, this could have been horrible. She could have died. When you fall three times your height, 50% of people Ready? will die. Jordan said that she didn't immediately feel any pain because of the adrenaline, but once an off-duty EMT pulled her out of the water and onto the rocks, she said she realized that she was struggling to breathe and she could see her skin color changing. Jordan was immediately rushed to the hospital and this is where she found out that she had five broken ribs, a punctured lung, bruised esophagus, an injured trachea, a leg injury, and air trapped in the lining of her lungs. Later when she was feeling up to it, Jordan said in an interview that she was happy to be okay, but that it would be six weeks before the pain went away and an additional six months before she could participate in sports again. Jordan's mother told the media that she thought that since Taylor was an adult, member Taylor's 18, Jordan's 16, that she should be charged criminally for pushing her daughter off the bridge. She should probably just turn herself in. I realized what she did wrong. This is not okay. She could have killed my daughter. But then later in the middle of August, Taylor went on Good Morning America and did an interview and said that Jordan wanted her to push her off the bridge. And the big question is, everyone's asking, why did you push Jordan? She wanted to jump and she was scared and she had asked me to give her a push and I didn't think about the consequences. I thought she would be fine. So she asked you to give her a push off the yes. bridge? because she didn't want to jump. Yes, well, she wanted to jump. She just was scared she wouldn't be able to. And, and she ended up in the hospital. She had <clears throat> punctured lungs, she had broken ribs. Yes. Were you surprised that she was hurt? I was, but then again, I was with her when she came out of the water and I knew something was wrong. So it wasn't that big of a surprise, I guess. And you two have been best friends for years. Yeah, we were pretty close, yes. And, and, but now she says she wants you to sit in jail yeah. Does that surprise you that she said that? It's surprising. It's a little shocking, but it's understandable. She's probably through a, going through a lot of confusion. And then the day after that interview, Jordan went on and said that Taylor was lying, which I would just have to believe too. I mean, you could look at Jordan standing on that ledge and she did not look like she wanted somebody to push her off. Hey, hey Jordan, yesterday we heard Taylor's side of the story for the first time, and one of the things that Taylor contends is that you asked her mm -hmm. to push you because you were too afraid to do it on your own. Is, is that how you remember it? Nope, I never asked Taylor to push me, and I don't think I would have if I wouldn't have jumped. Are, are, you, are you saying then that, that she was lying yesterday when she said that? Taylor was definitely lying in her interview yesterday because I can't imagine asking Taylor to push me off a bridge. Taylor said she actually went to the hospital, you know, to follow Jordan after she had been injured, but she was immediately turned away and she was asked to leave. Initially when it happened, you, you reached out to her to, to, at the hospital. You actually went to the hospital. I went to, to the her. hospital. And what happened there? Um, I got asked to leave. I wasn't allowed to see her. So I had left and went home. And did you have, have you had any communication with her since this all happened? We've talked on Snapchat a few times, a few text messages. Um, I've apologized several times, but I have not been able to see her in person. And, and what was her response to your apology? It's changed quite a bit. At the beginning, she was very, um, you're fine. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. And then now she just doesn't answer. So. <laughs> Radio, radio silence. Yes. And do you think you two can ever be friends again someday? I hope so. I really do. I love that girl. 
I hope so. It's up to her. The ball's in her court. However, Jordan's friends and family told a different story. They said that Taylor never actually came to the hospital and didn't even attempt to apologize to Jordan. So what ended up happening with these two teenagers were Taylor was eventually charged criminally for reckless endangerment and she pled not guilty. Prosecutors said they charged Taylor because the push created a substantial risk of death or serious physical injury and the charge could even bring up to a year in jail and possibly a fine of $5,000. In February of 2019, Taylor's legal team said that they received a plea deal from the state and were reviewing it. They didn't share any of the details of the plea deal, but Jordan's family told the media they were okay with it. So they go to court with Taylor. So Taylor's going to plead guilty now for this plea deal for her not to get any jail time or anything. So again, the prosecution and the defense agree that she's not going to get any jail time. She's going to get this other punishment. The judge said, I don't think so. And this does not happen often. If any of you guys have ever been in the court system, if you're in the legal system, you know that when the prosecution and the defense agree and they come up with a plea deal for something to plead guilty, very rarely does the judge accept the guilty plea because the, the, the person is exchanging their plea to guilty from not guilty in order to get this agreement. Very rarely does the judge say, nope, I'm going to sentence you the way I want to. And that's what the judge did in this case. The judge ended up sentencing Taylor to the same amount of time in jail that Jordan spent in the hospital. Thank you. Now, it was only two days, but Taylor was crying, y'all, and she was all upset. And, I mean, it probably was a little traumatic for her because the jail is stinky and loud and you're in there with, like, real criminals and stuff like that. And she just felt like she was a teenager that just made a mistake. However, she could have killed that girl. And I know when we're teenagers, we're young, you don't think about stuff like that. It's just an impulse thing. And then she ended up getting 38 days on a work crew. All of her fines except for $300 were suspended and there was a no contact order put in place for two years. Several people spoke at the sentencing hearing. Listen to this. Jordan, I'm 17, I didn't ask for any of this, but last summer my said-to-be-good friend changed my life for the worse. I didn't ask for any of this, but last summer, my said good friend changed my life for the worst. This nightmare started for me when I was falling through the air, and I was really terrified. I couldn't shower by myself, couldn't use the bathroom by myself. I could barely even walk. Once I left the hospital, I was left in pain. It was so bad that I was given heavy narcotics for weeks. To this day, my ribs have healed, but I still get pain and discomfort in that area. I also can't play my desired position for softball because my arm, which I'm still in physical therapy for. I've always wanted to play college softball, but now I may not get that chance. Even though it happened last summer, I can't sleep at night anymore because of PTSD and insomnia. I have these anxiety attacks that are so bad that my body feels like it's shutting down and I feel like I'm going to die. This has taken over my life and limited the things I can do without having an attack. Through all this suffering for me, I'm just disappointed that Taylor has not owned up to her actions and wasn't sincere about apologizing. 
I never wanted to be pushed off that bridge. And I said no, as seen in one of the videos. And Taylor had no right taking away my right for making my own decision that day. I was really looking forward to a sincere apology. And all I've been receiving from the family is threats and lies. Taylor has made me feel guilty and look like a bad guy in this situation when I need to remember that I have done nothing wrong. This past August, an incident happened at Walton Falls, and neither mine or Jordan's life has been the same since. <coughs> I've come to the realization that kids just being kids use a lot further than the statement itself. Throughout this terrible process, I've not only grown as a person, but I have learned to think and process outcomes before I act upon a brief moment in time. I'd like to sincerely apologize. <coughs> I'd like to sincerely apologize to Jordan Holgerson, her family and friends for the pain and humiliation <coughs> I had caused by my mindless action that occurred last summer. Although it may seem like my intent was to harm, or even though I moved on without putting any punishment on myself, this is false. Jordan has passed through my thoughts repetitively since the incident. My words here are sincere. I can't say I don't deserve the hate from the media or the loss of old friends, but what I can say is that I have and will continue to try my best to right my wrongs and pray for a full recovery, not only physically but emotionally, to the Holgersons, to the Holgersons and the other people I have hurt by the decision I made. Thank you. And just as a follow-up, there is a video that is on Jordan's TikTok that said that she's doing good now, but she's no longer friends with Taylor. So that's that's good that she's doing good now. Okay, what do I think? Remember how I was saying in the beginning, it just reminds me, we used to jump off of bridges all the time. As a matter of fact, I cut my foot really bad jumping off of a pier one time because you don't know what's under the water of the places that we would jump. But we would jump off of bridges. And I remember one time we were at this river. I was probably 14 at the time. And there's one spot of the bridge that you can jump off of that is deep. The rest of it is shallow, but there's one hole on the side of the bridge where you can jump off of. And a girl jumped off of the bridge this day and she landed in the wrong spot and she ended up in a wheelchair. And it was just so, I wanna say traumatizing, but like for her, I mean, you know, you're just jumping off of a bridge with your friends. You're young. It's exciting. All of your friends are doing it. And she just happened to miss that spot enough and her feet hit the bottom and she was rushed to the hospital and put in a wheelchair. And there was other bridges that we jumped off of that had shopping carts. People would push shopping carts off of them. I mean, it's a wonder so many other things didn't happen. And so when I saw this video of these kids jumping off the bridge, it just reminded me of it. But as being an adult now that has kids, I see it in a different light. And so when I saw the girl push Jordan, I mean, devastating. You just see her shove her and her body jerks. And then you think about her landing chest first. It is truly a miracle that she survived that with the punctured lung and five broken ribs and the bruised esophagus and the injured trachea. I mean, holy cow. I don't believe that the other girl intended to injure her that bad, but I am glad that the judge made an example out of her, but it does suck. I do wonder if this park has done more than just put the signs up at this point. You would kind of think that if this many people got injured that they would have some sort of like security guard on. I, I, I don't know, but nevertheless, what do you guys think? Have you heard about this case? I mean, this happened years ago, so... Both of these young girls are adults now, and hopefully they have moved on. Have y'all heard about it? Y'all jumped off bridges? Have you pushed somebody off of a bridge? Let me know down below. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love you guys, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye!